Hello everyone and welcome to Bourbon Bites, whiskey reviews with a gaming twist. I am Clifton and I am so glad to be back with you guys today, even though you probably didn't even know I was gone. Um, but I was on vacation this past weekend, you may notice a little little sunburn on the face maybe, or maybe it's a tan, we'll see what you want to call it. Um, <laughs> but so glad to be back here today and doing some really, really awesome bourbons. Now, as many of you know, Old Forester traditionally has not been my favorite distillery. However, I have not had a fair tasting of the Whiskey Rose series, which I have in front of me tonight. Um, I also have only tried one of the birthday bourbons, so tonight's going to be really, really interesting. Maybe I'll get sold on Old Forester. Maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> but I do appreciate y'all tuning in for the fun here tonight. Um, first of all, welcome everyone to the chat. Wow. You guys were chatty. I, I didn't have the chat open because I was uh, was watching Ed stream and I like was scrambling to get my stuff together. But so good to see so many of you. Welcome to the chat, Trev Wilson and Brandon. Of course, the guys are always there. Patrick Starkey, Run Rev Collins, also a patron of the show. Cheech Ardolino, think you're new. Welcome. Thank you for stopping in. Sugar Kitty, awesome patron. Kira from uh, the Shelf Turds, who submitted a blend for um, Rock Guts Swell. Swim again. <laughs> I will not tell you where they placed or not. You gotta go watch his stream if you missed it. Um, Wesley Zeller, Donnie, the Linux cat. Good to see you, Donnie. Tim Evans. Choo -choo -choo. Is that everyone? I already said Wesley Zeller. I said your name twice. <laughs> Sawyer, Sawyer Fam Sensi. I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. Ryan Tarpy. Also, I don't know if you've been here. I've seen you around on other streams, but <laughs> glad to have you here. Um, lobster shines. <laughs> um, Tom Flanagan, what's up, Tom? Good to see you. I know you are an old For Forester fan, so I figured you might enjoy the stream. We'll see. We'll see if I can get sold on it too. Clifford Cawthorn, uh, Clifford, not Clifton, but good to see you, Clifford. Um, everyone calls me Clifford, or the Mash and Drum if he's here. He's called me Clifford a couple times. I'm Clifton, but <laughs> love you, Jason. Um, what's up, Emily Chambers? Um, <laughs> Wesley Zeller, you are worth two recognitions. Um, so before we get into these old Forester, I do want to give a couple announcements heads up. First of all, more of a warning, if my internet happens to cut out and the stream disappears like we had an issue two weeks ago, just want to give a warning a couple, like these couple weeks after, just to make sure. Stick around, um, hit the bell button below and you'll be notified if I start a different stream on a different, like, video. Um, that happened last time, it was like chaos, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen. Other announcement is, even though I was out of town on Saturday, I did upload a new video um, of the new Compass Box Pete Monster Arcana. It's a, it's a mouthful. Um, I know a lot of you guys are bourbon people, so I know the views on that one won't be as good, but um, I could use a couple comments. So yeah, after the stream, or if you're watching the replay, go check out that one. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of it, and I'm curious to see if I was spot on with my notes, because I'm really, I'm really bad about giving scotch notes. <laughs> I'm still learning there, but... Um, yeah, so glad to have you guys here for today's stream. Now, this stream, I don't actually have the full-size bottles. I do have these little sample bottles, um, which are actually provided to me by the Seven Grand um, Whiskey Society, um, which is a local bar here in LA. Um, they actually, they didn't like, they didn't like send this to my channel or anything. They had a tasting with um, Old Forester three weeks ago, I think. Um, I wasn't able to make it because it's the same time as my streams, but I did sign up for a tasting kit. So I watched the replay of that, and I wanted to taste these for you guys tonight. I have not had them yet. I, I didn't watch them with the replay, or I didn't taste them with the replay, but I um, want to give some first impression. I do have some info cards about each of these. So, um, yeah. So what are y'all drinking tonight? I know some of y'all have been drinking for a while. I know Perry started back his live streams <laughs> at 8 p.m. my time, or no, 8 p.m. his time. So some of y'all have been drinking. This is going on hour three. So I got some catching up to do. I, I had something to drink earlier today, but it's been a couple hours. So let's say let's go ahead and pour the first one. I need some water, though, because I'm talking a lot. Hey, Uncle Buck, good to see you. I don't know if I missed you earlier, but good to see you here. Um, for those of you that may be new, like I said, I'm Clifton. Um, I do whiskey reviews here on Thursday nights, so if you like the whole, um, if you like Rock Gut and you like Perry, I think you'll like me. So if you hit the subscribe button, it really does mean a lot. A lot. And of course, leave me a like is much, much appreciated. Um, I appreciate all the new subscribers I've gotten over the past, like, like literally in 30 days, I've gotten like 75 subscribers, which is awesome. I'm so glad for that. I think we're almost at the 2,500 mark, so I gotta have a celebration when we get that. That's like kind of a quarter, nah, I'm not gonna count my, count my eggs, chickens. 
I just want to count my whiskey. How about that? Let's go ahead and move on to the first one we have here. Um, this is, let me see if I can pull up my little info card here. Uh, yeah, it's a, little, it's a little dark, but hopefully you guys can see it. This is, these are actually the tasting cards they gave us um, for the tasting. I just took pictures of them and brought them in. So hopefully you guys can see them okay. So this is the first in their Whiskey Rose series. Now, they, they put out four different ones of these. Um, they're different, they celebrate different aspects or different key milestones in not just their history, but in whiskey making history. So the first one is their original batch. Now, like it says, it's pulling, it's, their original batch was pulling from a small batch of barrels. So this is kind of like a, it's, it's definitely a step up from standard Old Forester. Um, now, I do, the only thing I don't have is price points on these, and I wish I would have pulled that up. I don't know exactly how much this goes for, um, so I do apologize for not having that info in front of you. But you guys you guys just do, check your stores maybe while you're watching the stream. Let me know if, if one of these seems like something that's right up your alley. Um, let me know how much it costs, because I might, or especially if it's something I like, then I'm going to have to go look it up myself. But yeah, so let's start with the first one, 1870. Um, so the reason I say that I traditionally haven't liked Old Forester is because... I am a little averse to that um, banana note. And I know, I know, that's in a lot of whiskeys. Pref preferential, primarily, that's the word, primarily brown form and products. I get a lot of it. It can be really nice and higher proof stuff. I Disclaimer, I have, have had an Old Forester single barrel barrel proof that is fabulous. It is a brown sugar baked banana bread that I absolutely love. So not fully opposed to it, but... Sometimes banana gets a little, like, artificial... Not did I say banana gets a little? <laughs> Sometimes Old Forester gets a little artificial banana, like a runts kind of flavor that's not my favorite flavor profile. So we'll see if that carries through with each of these. Um, I'm assuming as we move up in proof, I'm, I'm going to start to like them a bit more. Um, but that's just my thoughts. Um, just curious, do you guys like Old Forester? I know that's one of the one, more divisive ones. I know a lot of people... And William just said 1920 changed his mind. That's the one for a lot of people. That's actually one of a lot of people's first whiskey that they fall in love with. Um, so that's that's awesome to hear um, that it changed your mind. I hear that a lot too. Um, so we got our first super chat in the night. I did forgot to mention that. Um, thank you for thank you for the reminder, Sawyer. Uh, I think you're gonna have a little notification pop up here soon. <laughs> but I appreciate. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm gonna scoot you up a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna roll the barrel on the screen. There we go. Sawyer fam, Cincy, so good to have you here. Like I said, I think it may be your first time. Glad to have you part of the channel. Um, any super chats to come through tonight, they're highly, highly appreciated. Uh, but I also appreciate if you guys could check out my Patreon. Um, it's just patreon.com slash bourbon bites. We have a lot of fun over there. Actually, on Thursday nights, we do an after party hangout on our Discord channel. So um, all that info is down in the description. So you don't have to be a patron to join the Discord. But if you want to come to the after party, um, which is a lot of fun, um, it's at the $10 level on Patreon. But any, any support, Super Chat or um, Patreon really, really supports the channel. And I just appreciate you guys so much. And I appreciate you guys for watching. You don't have to be a patron. You just you just got to enjoy the show. So <laughs> let's go ahead and start drinking some whiskey, man. It's been like 10 minutes. And I don't have anything in my glass. But cheers, Sawyer. Sawyer fam. I keep calling you Sawyer. I think your name may be... So is your name Cincy? You said, your channel name sounds like a, you actually have like a... I'm just imagining you having like a, um, a family vlog channel, the Sawyer family, based in Cincinnati. Is that the truth? We'll see. <laughs> uh, cheers. So this is the 1897... Or, no. Oops. 1870 small batch. Hmm. That actually... I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, that's not just 80 proof. That's a step up. That is 86 proof. I was like, ooh, that kind of kind of punches hard. Um, Cohen says, I thought you didn't love Old Forester. That's why I'm giving them all a shot tonight. Um, I've told this story a couple times. I'm just trying to adjust my, I'm like out of frame a bit. There, there we go. Since we have some little side panels here. Um, so my story that I've told um, with my experience, especially with the Whiskey Rose series, is I went to a tasting. I won't say name names of who hosted the tasting. It was, I think it was just rushed together. What they did was they poured, they pre-poured everyone's pours of the Whiskey Rose series in little tiny plastic cups. Like I'm talking like less than half an ounce cups. So that bourbon was sitting in those plastic cups for at least 30 minutes to an hour before it even started the tasting. So some people's had gone cloudy. I know mine, mine didn't go cloudy, but my neighbor is like, he just handed his glass to me. He's like, is it supposed to look like this? I'm like, no. I was like, don't drink that. 
and it absorbed a lot of the plastic taste from the plastic cups. Again, I think it may something may have you know been a last minute thing. I'm not going to judge too hard. I've been to some. I will say I've been to some really great tastings from that group. It just wasn't the best tasting. Um, but I was really off put by Old Forester after that. So I wanted to go through myself. This is um, like I said, put on by a different group. And these sample bottles have been sealed since they arrived, and I can tell you already, they're not cloudy. <laughs> they are very, very clear. So, again, i got to give Old Forester a fair shot. Now, I have had the 1920 myself. Um, I really haven't loved it, but it's been a minute, so we'll, we'll see if it can pull through tonight. I did forget to mention, not only are we tasting the Whiskey Rose series, we got two other things we're tasting. We are tasting, of course, if you, as you saw in the thumbnail, the 2020 Birthday Bourbon. have a little sample of it here. Um, we also were tasting, I did a little blend, you know the blend I'm talking about, the 1910 and the 1920, the one that everyone recommends, I've never had it, so I let this mingle overnight, got a little agitation in there, um, thank you so much Donnie, Donnie posted the link to the Patreon page, we are at 26 patron, who, who will be number 27, I don't know, maybe we'll hit 27 tonight, maybe we'll hit 30 tonight, I don't know, y'all, if y'all want to come to a real party, I'll just say the after party is pretty, pretty lit fam, oh god, ew, ew, stop, okay, anyways, <laughs> Okay, so I'm not on the 1910 yet. I'm on the 1870. So now y'all may be able to tell me a bit more about these than I actually know. I just know what's on these cards, um, and and what I've heard at tastings. So um, I and actually I wanted to do the Old Forester tour in Louisville, but I just ran out of time. I did so many. I did Peerless. I did um, the Evan Williams experience. I just did not have enough time on my short trip to Kentucky. Maybe next year. We'll see. All right, so let me let me dive back into the 1870. On the nose, though, I will say it's promising. It's more, it's not really the dark, like, banana nut bread note that I sometimes get, but it is still kind of like a baked, like a, a, a banana, maybe like a banana nut muffin. I know those are, like, basically the same thing, but when I think of a banana nut bread, I expect, I expect something that's a little bit more firm, maybe with, like, like, a dark caramel coating on it. This one is still very light, very fluffy. Is fluffy a note on the nose? I don't know. It's kind of like a fluffy fluffy note but um it's not bad it's, it's not that banana runts which is when i say runts i'm talking about the candy those hard candies um it's not that so that's that's good so let's go ahead and i, I know i already tasted it but let's go ahead and give it a second taste <laughs> so uncle buck says all of old forester is non-chill filtered could be the cloudiness no buck this time it was like <laughs> it was very cloudy and i and it was because it was in these little flimsy plastic cups from who knows where had been sitting there for an hour, and we're talking like high proof stuff. I think it definitely got contaminated a bit um, from the plastic, and it tasted plasticky. So it, I don't think it was that. Um, MSRP on the 1870 is 45 bucks. Thank you so much, Brandon. You're awesome, Brandon. First of all, shout out to Brandon, Trev, and Donnie, my awesome mods here tonight. I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, <laughs> Rock God, welcome to the show. He just did his um, <laughs> his swim again. Uh, Kira's asking if he's okay. Hopefully, you're okay, um, Ed. Thank you for powering through. I need to watch the replay because I came in a bit late. Um, so yeah, so this is the 1870. It's a little, now that I've got past the initial shot, because at first I was like, whoa, that's higher proof than I thought. It's light. It's oaky, but not like a, like a dark, it doesn't taste as aged as it could be. It's more of like a new oak taste. It's not really those rich wood sugars. It's more of like a, I guess maybe like a pine kind of note. Banana isn't really, you know, I'm actually surprised by how little banana, banana I'm getting on the first or second sip. It's there at the tip of my tongue. Not really on the finish though. I don't know. That one for me, for $45, as Brandon said, um, it just doesn't hit my fa flavor palette. Um, everyone's different. That's the thing. I'm not saying this is bad, but... I really, really want to like Old Forester. That's why we're tasting through each of these tonight. Maybe I will find the one or the blend that sells me on Old Forester. So right now, 1870, it's it's fine. If you like more of those like banana notes, um, this will be up your alley for sure. Jack Daniels lovers. Um, now y'all know I'm a big fan of Jack, Daniel, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. Um, this probably won't hit the right spot for you. I think some of these later ones like the 1920 may be more up your alley. This one's very... Not young. I don't want to say it's very young. It's just not as well developed as I'm sure many of these are about to be. So that's the thought on the 1870. Now I can I can go back through. We'll see it. We'll see how we do on time. But yeah, 1870. You know, it's 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 good. Not my favorite. 
um, again, from a, a non-big <laughs> fan, for someone that's not a big fan of Old Forester. But I'm, I'm trying, guys. I'm really trying. Okay. So let's move on to bourbon number two of the night. Um, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> Rock Guts says his, his belly's definitely feeling a bit tum- tum- tumultuous. That's a big word. I don't know. Imagine it's not very good. <laughs> Um, what's up, Stanley? An awesome, also another patron of the show. Good to have you here, Stanley. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the 1897, which is... There we go. So this one is their Bottled in Bond. Now, y'all know I am a huge proponent of Bottled in Bond products. Um, Stephen Sussman, I, I, don't, I saw you earlier. I don't think I gave you a shout out. Welcome, Stephen. Good to see you. Stephen is another admin over on our Discord page. Um, helps keep that together. Um, so shout out to Stephen. And of course... Y'all go check out the Discord. It's it's his work of art, and it's so much fun. Um, I think once we get some more people on there, we'll be way more active. But so happy to have that set up and running. And um, yeah, like I said, the link to that should be in the description. If it's not, um, I'm sure someone can share it. <laughs> all right, let's go into the bottled in bond. Now, as y'all, as many of y'all know, um, bottled in bond is basically a legal definition. Um, it's basically has to be from, it says it right here, but from one distilling season in the same year in a federally bonded warehouse aged for a minimum of four years. So we don't know the age on this one. I imagine all of these are probably a bit older than four years old. Cause you gotta think even like with Old Forester being such a large, you know, brand, their, their cheaper offerings are probably going to be more of like the two, three year old. I'm not, I think the original batch probably is around that four year mark too. However, this one is also 100 proof, which is awesome. Um... I saw the colors. Some of the colors are correct. It's all working on you. Okay, I was, like, I was at the show about the Patreon. I was like, ooh, or not the Patreon, the Discord. It's like, oh, I hope I got everyone's colors right on Discord. Yeah, basically on Discord, um, your tier should line up with your Patreon level. So if it doesn't, let me know and I can manually do it. Um, Brandon also in with the win. Um, bur- or <laughs> bourbon. I almost said my own name. MSRP on the 1897 is $50. Now, for $5 more, you're getting 100 proof versus 86 proof. You're getting a bottled in bond product. I always recommend that. I mean, one of the first bourbons I fell in love with was Evan Williams bottled in bond. And I think that's just, it's just a very, I don't think I've ever had a bad bottled in bond product. Mellowcorn, eh, it's not bad for the price. Mellow, Mellowcorn is bottled in bond, believe it or not. Um, but it's not a bourbon. I've never had a bad bottled in bond bourbon or rye for that matter, because Rittenhouse. So, now let's move on to this. Now, this one on the nose. Now, I still have some of the other ones. I just want to do a little, little quick comparison. Yeah, the first one, it's like, it's still that, like, new oak. Like, I'm, talking about the, I'm talking about the 1870. It's like a really, like, a freshly cut down tree. This one definitely, maybe it does have more age on it. This one definitely goes into the darker, almost like the banana nut bread note that I like. Um, and maybe that just comes with proof. Maybe once you amp the proof up, the flavor gets amped up, too. So, uh, wait, of the eighteen seventy, it say ninety proof. Uh, let me double check. I thought it said ninety proof. Wait, where did I see eighty six proof? Where am I reading? No, wait. Oh, oh my God, you're right. I'm so sorry. It is not eighty six proof. I was looking at. I thought I had these in order. <laughs> this is just standard old Forester. Where does it say ninety proof? Is it ninety proof? I'm, okay, y'all may have to tell me the proofs because I'm so sorry. I was looking at <laughs> I was looking at the wrong card. Ah, uh, that's what I get for trying to like. And there's statesmen in here too, so let me let me move those out of the way so I don't make any more mistakes. All right, there's that one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, so it actually doesn't say the proof on that, but thank you so much for the correction. Um, <laughs> I'm losing viewers now because I'm spreading misinformation. I'm sorry. You're right. It is ninety proof. I was just looking at the wrong card. So, thank you for helping me sort that out. So 90 proof. Okay, so we're jumping up 10 proof points. Um, so, thank you for the correction again. You're awesome. Oh, I saw a message. Um, someone said something about, oh, Dickel Bottle and Bond. That's, yeah, well, Dickel's Tennessee whiskey, not technically a bourbon. I mean, y'all know, y'all know. But yeah, so, okay, so the first one was 90 proof. Oh, it's on the neck of the bottle. Oh, that's okay. That's true. I was like squinting. I was like, "Where is it?" Okay, so you're right. Ninety proof for the first one. Correction. I'll put a little annotation on the in the comments. So, let me move on to the bottle and bond again, though. Y'all are awesome. That's why. That's why I love y'all. <laughs> so this is one hundred proof for sure because it's bottle and bond. It has to be hundred proof, at least in the states. I learned that if you have an exported one bottle and bond product, it doesn't have to be hundred proof. Like shocker.
oh yeah, on the palette, that extra 10 poof points and potential extra age, it's more up my alley. It's more of the like the darker, darker um, oaky notes. Still banana, but not the fake banana, which is always my big plus. As long as it's not the fake banana, I'm okay with it. Um, the finish does fall a little flat for me. Now, this is only a $5 price difference, like Brandon said. Um, it falls a little flat. I don't know. I mean, you got to be... If you're an old Forester lover, you're going to like all these. But as someone that, that's trying to become an old Forester lover, it's not my favorite. Oh, my Patreon link has a typo. Man, I just... That's what I get for trying to rush tonight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Um, it, yeah, it's patreon.com slash bourbon bites. Um, I actually just copied it from a different stream, so I mean, it's wrong on that stream, too. Uh, so sorry, guys. But look, we're, we're holding it together. We're keeping it together. Um, I would have an annotation on StreamYard. I have a little annotation, but I'm not using StreamYard tonight, so... So yeah, I, I do think the Bottle and Bond is an improvement over the small batch. It, it it describes itself as dark and spicy, and I think that's exactly... I don't think it's necessarily more spicy. It's definitely darker, for sure. Now, spicy, I think it might be coming through in more of like... seems more like a baked good versus like a... Like a... I mean, I know a mu... <laughs> Y'all are going to judge me like... I'm like a muffin versus banana bread. It's different. Gosh. No, but... It, it, but I think of muffins as fluffy, and I think of banana bread as dense. This is more dense. Um, I do think I, I do wish there was a little bit more on the finish. Um, it's it's nice. It's nice on the palate, but it's not got a very long finish. So Cohen says I heard the new barrel strength is very good and better than 1920. I think I agree with you on that. Um, I've done them both side by side. And I personally preferred the barrel proof. Now I haven't tried the 1915 blend. I'm, I've heard that's so much better than the regular 1920s. So very very excited to get to that point tonight. Um, but Brandon does say he has a good point. You could have a Stag Junior at 55 and ECBP at 60. That's because that's more up my flavor profile. Now, do I find Stag Junior on the shelf for 55? No, I used to, but no. Elijah Craig barrel proof is a little easier to find, but it's still more limited. These though. At least I think the 1910 is probably the most limited of all of these. Um, I think I believe 1910 is the newest edition, right? Or it, it like it comes out in limited editions. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not the biggest versed. I'm not like versed too much on Old Forester. Um, I used to be able to get Stag Junior for 50. Now again, that's not been in the past year, so take that for what it is. But yeah, no, Sugar Kitty's exactly right. Uh, muffin is more of like a sweeter like and you know when I say muffin I think even more you know have you ever had like the Starbucks blueberry muffins that has like the crystallized sugar on top um, I'm getting a bit more of that with the, the, the 1870 yeah sweeter less less complex for sure it's like a sweeter light wood light banana note whereas the bottle and bond is darker denser and I guess I guess you can call it spicier like they say um, but to me, it's more of like, it tastes like a more cooked, <laughs> baked good, I guess. So with that, I definitely prefer the Bottle and Bond. It's definitely the superior product in my book. For $5 more, grab the Bottle and Bond. So those are the first two. Now we will be moving on to, oh, also Uncle Buck, Uncle Buck has a good point, Rare Breed for 50. Now Rare Breed has creeped its way up a little bit here in Southern California, getting closer to 60. It's a little little high but you know it, it's it's i don't think it's as good as elijah craig barrel proof in my book everyone's opinion is different i think i would rather have an elijah craig barrel proof for the same price <laughs> but it's it's harder available it's harder to find here um is my barrel strength from k and l yes yes k and l store picks are fantastic the guy that's over their spirits program at least in the hollywood store um david is such an awesome guy um, he does Instagram lives over on their page when they're doing picks. I watched them do a pick of um, Rebel Yell and Ezra Books. Um, really, really cool dude and really awesome store. So if you're in the Hollywood area or in California, they have a few different stores. Um, some in San Francisco area. Go check them out for sure. So we'll move on to bourbon number three tonight. And that is 1910. Now, I, I asked earlier, I, I thought this was more of a limited release or like a newer one. Um, can, can someone tell me for sure? I just know there was a big craze about 1910 about last year, or maybe it was the year before last, where everyone was seeking this one out. This one was like the hot the hot buy for a while. Um, so I'm not sure why. Um, now, the thing that makes this different is they do a double bear barreling. So they treat this, whether it's a similar process to like a Woodford double oaked or even a... Um, 
Now it doesn't say if they're toasted or charred. I don't actually know if these are toast. The second barrel is toasted or charred because I was gonna say it could be like a Michter's toasted barrel or a Electric Egg toasted barrel. But sorry, I just I just ate really quickly before this, so I'm a little little burpy, so I apologize. MSRP on this is 55. Wow, they only go up in five dollar increments. That's crazy, Brandon. Um, yeah, rare breed. It it's not 60. I I think I was I think maybe I was getting confused because it was around it was around 42, 43, and I think it's creeping into like the 50. 355 area now so not quite 60 but it's working its way up um okay patrick says that 1910 is the newest of the whiskey row series that's, that's what i think so too yeah um toasted barrels okay so run rev says these are toasted barrels gotcha so yeah it is like a it is like a um like a mictors or a a um elijah craig toasted um more so than like a woodford double double oat oh wait cohen has a or cohen has a youtube channel final is the final whiskey row oh so fred so fred says it's charred to the point where the barrels almost fall apart okay so we got conflicting views i don't know so what i don't know which one's right but either way maybe we can find out from the taste let's go ahead and pour it and see what we can find in here so let's go ahead and pour the 1910 like we said it was 55 dollars. thank you again brandon for that info um now the proof on this one is 93 proof i can see because i'm looking at the right <laughs> looking at the right card right now not test okay fred I, fred I, yeah i trust you but and I think I think I think you're right because I think it would say toasted on here because a lot that's like a marketing term especially if this is like a newer product they would love to put the word toasted on there I think that's they would definitely want to do that so so definitely like a second char for sure um so Clifford says seemed people thought that the proofs would be going up with each of these releases um, and they thought they thought this one would be higher proof so there was some disappointment gotcha yeah I just remember people were like buying this up when it first came out. On the nose, though, that's that's actually, wow, that's very, very different, especially from the first one. Now, compared to the bottle and bond, the bottle and bond, almost, it's like a, bottle and bond almost smells older, believe it or not. Yeah, the, the oak on the bottle and bond it almost comes across more of like it's set in the barrel a little longer. This smells, at least on the nose, like it was in the barrel a similar length to the small batch. Um, but maybe they did like a quick little, you know, six to nine month second barreling. That's on the nose. Though. Let's go to see if it has a different taste. Cheers, you guys. Hmm. So, um, I don't know how I feel about that one. It does have a bit more barrel char. Um, so Brandon says, I wonder how this compares to the Elijah Craig Toasted. I think this is more comparable to like a Woodford Double Oaked, only because um, you're not getting really those like bright like marshmallow. I always get like a marshmallow note on a toasted barrel. This is still in that deep, deeper wood note. However, honestly, this really just tastes like a Double Oaked version of the first one. And I hate to say that because I mean, we are, this is the newest release. This is the priciest one we've tried so far. Um, I do have a little bit more of the first one. So I want to, I want to go back to that one real quick. Oh yeah, going back to the first one, the first one is just like, and, and it, the proof point is only three points different. So it's not that much higher proof, but the first one's very flat, one dimensional, still sweet, sweet, like a new oak. This one though, that definitely amps up the first one. This one is just as sweet as the first one. The oak presence is definitely more there. However, I don't think it tastes as old as the bottle and bond. Now, I see a lot of people in chat saying that the 1910 is their favorite. So I, I can see that. Again, not being an old Forester fan, I like I like sweeter, dark, rich notes. And I get that for sure on the bottle and bond. I actually, so far, I think the bottle and bond has been my favorite, which is good for me because it's cheaper. Yeah. Bottle and bond tastes a bit older to me. I really, really appreciate the bottle and bond. Now, we don't know the age on these. Patrick does clarify there. Thank you for looking that up, Patrick. He says they use a lightly toasted and heavy charred barrel. So still to still lightly toasted, but definitely heavy charred. Like someone said, they basically burned the barrel. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's Brown Foreman products, like Sugar Kitty, yeah. 
I get so many similar notes in them, and it's just not my it's not my cup of tea, not my cup of bourbon. You know, a lot of people love that. If you love a Woodford or you know an Old Forester, you'll probably love you know the higher end products here. But I think I still prefer the Bottle Bond. Now let's go ahead. So I want to pour the 1920 only because I want to do a comparison between the 1910, 1920, and of course the 1915, which is the special blend of the night. So 1920 is the highest proof. So let me pull that card up here real quick. All right, this is Prohibition style, which of course 1920 signifies Prohibition. So this is small batch presented at 115 proof, um, representing the typical barrel proof of bourbon at that time. So that's what we know based on the card. Now, if someone in the chat loves Old Forester and wants to share more about 1920, because I know 1920 is a bunch of people's favorite whiskey. So if you have some additional info on it, um, Ryan Tarpy and Brandon coming in with the info there. I appreciate you guys. Y'all are awesome. This is $60. So these are all $5 apart. That's surprising. I would have thought there would have been a little bit more of a price discrepancy between them. But hey, I mean, if you can get... Okay, now, the real question is, 60 bucks for this or 20 bucks more for a single barrel barrel proof? I already know my opinion, but we'll, we'll see. Tonight. Let's retaste the 1920 and see if my opinion has changed a bit. And then we get to, once we do the 1915, 1920, we will do the birthday bourbon, which I know a lot of y'all are excited for my thoughts on, so. <laughs> Brandon says he can get the 1920 for 48. Too bad we don't, he doesn't like it, yeah. So on the nose, let me, let me nose it first. This one is more reminiscent of the bottle and bond on the nose, for sure. Older smelling, and again, it's the higher proof, so it could be the higher proof. Hey, Patrick, thanks so much for the info. Yeah, 1920 is $60 MSRP. Now, I do know there was a Costco set. I don't, did y'all see the Costco set that had the 1920 and the um, the regular Old Forester, like the 100 proof Old Forester? That was $60 that came with two bottles of bourbon. That's a steal right there, especially if you love Old Forester. That comes out around holiday season, so keep an eye out to see if it comes out in your area. So, that's just every, it's, I'm, so, I'm sorry that's annoying. Like, every time I pick up my glass, like the lighting changes. Let me see if I can lock that in place. Do. Oh, we're dark. Man, I should know. I should have learned my lesson about never adjusting exposure during screen, stream. <laughs> Let's just keep it as is. My, my camera, like, once you adjust exposure, it affects frame rate, which is annoying as heck. As heck. Wow. I have not had enough to drink tonight if I'm saying it's annoying as heck. Let the, we'll see on the after party. Like I said, everyone is welcome to the after party that's a patron, $10 and up. Uh, but everyone's welcome to the Discord, too. We just do the after party on the Discord, if that makes sense. Yeah, 1920 is definitely giving me those darker, richer, oaky notes. Now, I would assume this is aged a bit longer. We don't know. There's no age statement on any of these. Let's go ahead and give it a taste, though. Cheers. Ooh. You know, as someone that's previously had the 1920... Tickle me impressed. That is very good proof. I love that proof point at 115 proof. That's that's awesome. Banana still is not the artificial runts, which is a big plus. Um, still, ah, man, it's I want a really rich finish. When I know that it's possible with Old Forester because the barrel proof single barrels have one of the most fantastic finishes I've had all year on a whiskey. Um, oh, Emily's heading out. Emily, thank you so much for stopping in. Um, good to see you here. Um, yeah, 1920. That's good. Now, I, I do want to do the bottle and bond real quick. I just want to try a little side by side. <laughs> still need SPF 80, yeah. I was, I was using SPF 70 most of the weekend, but I still got, I'm not like super burnt, but I'm definitely got some pink tint to me. <laughs> A little more than normal. I'm, I'm always like, I, my skin tone is more in like the pink territory, I guess. It's always been that way. So, Bottle and Bond, again, I love how the oak is impacting the Bottle and Bond. And I, and all the nose, the nose of the 1920 smells so similar. At the front of the palate, 1920 is fantastic. It's, Whew, it's hot. It's hot. It mingles that darker, older oak. Someone said six to eight years. I think for sure, that was six to eight, not 68 years, in case you misheard me. Um, oh, God. Could you imagine a bourbon 68 years old? Oh, that sounds awful. But six to eight years old, I think that barrel impact 
is way more apparent there. It's not the new oak. It's more of like the really rich oak that I like. Not quite like a Knob Creek. None of these are going to hit you like a Knob Creek. You know, how oaky those, especially the store picks are. It's not going to hit you like that. But it, 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 it hits pretty well. And honestly, I do have to say the 1920 is my favorite of these four. Bottled and Bond does come very close. And I think for the price difference, this one's 60 versus... I think it was 50. I think Brandon said it was 50. Um, would I pay $10 more for the 1920? Yeah, I, I definitely would. Now... Now comes the time for the fun part. We're gonna do, we are gonna do a blend that's been highly recommended, um, not just like on the channel, but just in general. This is like a very, very popular blend on Whiskey Tube. So let me position myself. I don't have a, I don't have a screen for this one. <laughs> so this is, let me rinse my glass real quick and have a sip of water as we move into our 1915, um, which if you don't know, 1915 is an Eagle, Eagle Rare, why? Equal, <laughs> 1915 is an equal blend of 1910 and 1920. Now you are supposed to let this sit for, I think it's a couple weeks to like months. Um, I, yeah, I let it sit overnight. Cause you know, you know, we had time crunch. And also I just got back from vacation yesterday. So like, I guess I could have said it before, but um. Wow, so Cohen says that David at KNL says their barrel strength is way better than the 2020 birthday bourbon. Well, I got the birthday bourbon. I think I finished. We'll see, we'll see. Um, maybe on the after party or uh, Cohen. I don't know if you, I don't think you're a Patreon, but I was gonna say I'll try it on the after party. I just don't I just don't have that bottle in front of me. I'll have to go looking for it. And I hate to leave the stream to go do that, but we'll get to the birthday bourbon. Maybe if there's some time left at the end, I'll I'll put up a little little ad for my merch and then I'll go grab the birthday bourbon. We'll see. <laughs> or I'll go grab the um, single barrel barrel proof. This is just water. The Brea Tar Pits. Wait, what? What are y'all talking about? Oh, the <laughs> Full Forester tar, tar Barrel. Age 68 years. Oh, God, that sounds awful. Although, you know, y'all know me well enough that if a knob, if Knob Creek put a 68-year-old barrel bottle out and it was affordable, you know I'd try to get my hands on it. I, I would. <laughs> I would get it, like, Knob Creek. Uh, if it were 69... 69 year old knob creek hit me up hey jim beam i just I just created a product for you <laughs> oh god that would be awful we, it's okay had a cap on all right um i have not had oh shit brandon i think you're right i've been talking about the knl pick i don't have a knl pick i'm so sorry i i always assume i have a knl pick because i buy knl picks of everything I missed the old Forester when I was out of town when that one came around, and I do not have a K&L pick, so I do apologize for saying that I like the K&L pick. Um, I like the High Times pick. Brandon, you you just need to be just take over my channel, dude. Just <laughs> you should just come on instead of me. Okay, appreciate that, Brandon. Yeah, I do not have the High Times. I do not have the K&L pick. I have the High Times pick. However, if the K&L pick is anywhere near as good as the High Times pick, um, I, I I don't doubt that it's better than the Birthday Bourbon because the High Times. Again, best old forester I've ever had. And I did have the 2019 birthday bourbon, so. So. So let me go ahead and pour the blend here. I do have I do have a little bit left of each of those to try. Um, this is the 1915. Now, there's no cool story to go along with this. It's just a blend of the double-barreled and the, not barrel-proof, the, the 115 proof prohibition style. <laughs> Some Sugar Kitty says, if I bury my Knob Creek store pick for 10 years, will it equal 69 years? I mean, Knob Creeks are so dirt, dirty. Oof. Knob Creeks are so oaky that you could probably tell me that it was probably 20 years old, and I'd believe you. <laughs> um, Knob Creek 68-year-old pick for $45. <laughs> I went down, and their picks are so old. They could put out something like that. All right, so this is this is a bit of the blend, the 1915. So what, what, okay, what would the proof be if this were equal? So let's say 93 proof, 115 proof. We're right at like what, 10, are we at like 10, like 103? No, we're like 104. We're at like 104 proof, right? If I did equal pours of this. Oh my God, Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck says the 69 year old bottle of Knob Creek <laughs> pours out of both ends. Uh, and it's shaped like an old Dickel bottle. If y'all haven't seen those old Dickel bottles, they're hilarious. Google old Dickel bottle. You'll see. Make sure to say Dickel because don't look at old. Okay, anyways. Cheers to 1915. 
I feel like I'm like that that meme girl that that girl that's like, <laughs> I like that. I get why that's a thing. Can I tell you why I like it? Well, first of all, that's the brings out the most spice of any of these. That is baking spices at the tip of the tongue. I don't even get the banana. Like I gotta go for a second sip. That's 104. Okay, that was close. All right? Is that what I said? I was right. I don't know. People are right. I mean, I shouldn't doubt it. I mean, people came up with poor man's pappy. There's poorer man's pa pappy with larceny and makers. Um, that was the only one that I'd be able to make myself. That blend. I, I don't want to say that it's better than the single barrel barrel proof, but that's close. That is real close. Wow, that's a delicious. How does it, what I want to know is, how does this improve the finish of the 1920? Like, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, my brain, math doesn't comprehend let me pour let me try a little bit more of the 1920 and see oh yeah wow well i guess all i gotta say is that if you have both of these bottles i wouldn't say blend them all together do a little test experiment first however that's got to be one of the best tasting old forester products I've ever had it's not even an old forester product now i don't know i don't know if you guys have seen it some of the secondary groups um People are making labels for this. They are literally making custom Old Forester labels that like look like this, like the label over there, but say 1915. Like if people are taking this very, very serial. serial. People are taking it very serial. <laughs> the barrel influence. Yeah, the barrel influence added to the proof. Like up in the proof, having that extra barrel influence and that older age of the Prohibition era one. Now, don't get me wrong, Ronev, there is still some banana there. However, in every single one of these on their own, the banana was at the forefront, at the tip of the tongue. This one, baking spices are at the tip of the, tip of the tongue. Um, there's a little bit more banana on the mid palate, but the finish on this one, it, it literally, I don't get how, I don't understand chemistry or whiskey making or blending or whatever, but this makes for a very nice finish. It's not as abrupt as the 19, it's definitely longer than the first three. The 19, 1920 is kind of like an abrupt cutoff. It's not like a really smooth finish. This is, it evens it out. And I really, really appreciate that. Brandon says Cliffy's here. No, he's he's coming, but but no, I, I really, really enjoy that. And I, it, you know, if I owned a bottle, being someone that doesn't love the 1910 on its own and someone that appreciates the 1920 and it not being his favorite thing, not gonna lie, I would blend them together. Like the full bottles. <laughs> I really would, because I really, really enjoyed the 1915. Wow. I'm going to save a little bit of that, because I, I, you know what? I got to compare that to the birthday bourbon, which we are moving to next. But before we move there, um, let me ask, what are you guys drinking on now? I know y'all are on another pour. It's been 45 minutes. Y'all got to have some, something else in your glass. Or unless you take smaller pours. Well, if you take smaller pours, you have more in your glass. Okay, Cliffy's here. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> but... um <laughs> Stanley says, I'm super cereal, Valley Girl. Okay. okay, I'm not from California, but I'm super cereal. Okay. Tears, Stanley, your notification is about to pop up here. Any second here. Any second here. Barrel roll. There we go. Barrel roll for Stanley. So I will cheers you with the blend because it's delicious. So, <laughs> Brandon says Gatorade, dude. Okay. So, oh, Chris, Chris has a migraine. Chris, I'm sorry to hear that, man. That sucks. Well, hopefully you'll feel better. And if bourbon might, I, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, but I would say that bourbon might help or maybe it makes it worse. I'm not, don't take my advice. Don't sue me, please. Oh yeah. Patrick's on the 1915. Patrick, what do you think about the 1915? Are you enjoying it as much as I am? I don't know if you saw that. I saw that you said it was the barrel influence. I, I didn't know if you said something about it. Curious to see. So, how many of you guys have had the 1915, or, or the, had the blend? If you missed it, I'm talking about the blend here, the 1910 to 1920. What did you think of it? If you've if you've had it, yes, water pours, Wesley. I got a full glass here that I have not drank. That's that's the problem, isn't it? Chris says bourbon makes everything better, and what what better words to live by than those? So, with that. Let's go ahead and move on to this year's birthday bourbon, which I got the smallest sample bottle ever. I don't want to break it. I feel like this is like a antidote to some deadly virus 
or something. It's the smallest little container here. It's like half an ounce. Um, but you know what? I'm very appreciative of the guys at Seven Grand to provide this for us. Um, really, they're awesome. I can't wait to go back to the bar and revisit it. Um, so, Runner says, had the 1776 Old Fashioned Balcones Pot Stilled in 1910. Well, you are all over the place, Run Rev. Run, you are running all over the place. Ha, ha, oh God. God, Cliffy has the dad jokes too. All right, so this is the 2020 birthday bourbon. Now this didn't, this came out, this has been out for a while. I haven't seen it, of course, because who, who has seen it? Let's be real. So Patrick made a whole bottle. That's what I'm saying. About to make another batch. See, it's that good. I would make a whole bottle of it too. I, I totally would. And man, that, you know, I think my next bottle, of, if I don't get another barrel-proof single barrel, I'm going to get a 1910 and a 1920. I wish Costco had a set of those two. Then I could just buy it at once and be like, oh, there's my blend. So, all right, this is the 2020 birthday bourbon. Let me see what I can find, what info I can find on the birthday bourbon. Now, I have a window here pulled up. Um, so this one is 98 proof. Now, this actually came out in September. I thought it came out a bit earlier this year. Um, 98 proof, 10 years old, which is obviously the oldest we've had um up to this point um it is msrp is 130 dollars um, which i just saw in the chat brandon thank you so much um <laughs> yeah sugar kitty says birthday bourbon is an antidote to whatever ails and that's probably true i mean it is 98 proof it's not quite that barrel proof that 120 or that 60 percent alcohol you need for um disinfecting but you know almost there working on it um what's up james what's up james is a, a patron of the show um hope to see you tonight james in the hangout uh yeah brandon you're awesome with all the info man i just should have you on speakerphone during the stream just like chime in like hey clifton i'm like yes it's 10 years old thanks brandon <laughs> all right so let's go let's go to nose the um birthday bourbon shall we Ooh, you know maybe i don't dislike old forester products Maybe I only dislike young Old Forester products because at 10 years, man, that's got to be one of the, it's such a delicious nose. I mean, I think the nose on this is that hitting that, that level of, I think if you watch my stream, when I reviewed the single barrel barrel proof, I'm pretty sure I said with the, I could like smell it all day. I could just like have a candle made of it. I'm right there with that on the birthday bourbon. Ah, <sighs> man, that is. So it used to be $89 um, MSRP, according to Chris. Yeah, it's gone up a bit. But I mean, has the age gone up? Has it always been 10 years or has it been older? I'm very curious because I, I really don't um, don't have much experience. I tried last year's, but I, I don't know the statistics on it. Um, what's up? Ed is back. Had to watch some Packers. Yeah, I don't I do not do sports. All I know is like the, 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 the um, oh God, I almost said the Lakers. Wow, that would have been. <laughs> the um, Dodgers won the World Series because everyone in LA was talking about it like last week. That's all I know. Um, so Blackfly says they haven't made a 1915, but they enjoy A being a 1920 versus Bell Mead versus Stag Jr. That's a very interesting lineup. They're all, you know, high proof. Um, I love a good Bell Mead. I haven't had one in a while. I should buy another bottle of it. Uh, okay. So Chris and Uncle Buck are both saying, um, it's been older and then Chris says it's been higher proof too. So there's that. I mean, it is 98 proof, which is a reputable proof. So I will say on the, <laughs> exactly Stephen, go sports. Um, go sports. Cheers, you guys. That, that's tasty. Now, we are talking $130. We are talking an LE. That 1915 is something you can make at home for adding, doing math in my head. What, fifty-seven dollars? If you or not fifty seven oh wait, actually no. You can make two batches of it for like hundred and twenty dollars. Not this is not a fair comparison. Why why am I comparing an LE to a blend that you can make at home? <laughs> Even as someone that's not the biggest old Forester fan. That one right there tastes like a limited edition bourbon. And I know that's such a like, yeah, he's just saying that because it's an LE. 
there's a certain note. I don't know if you guys get this too. There's not really a note, but there's a certain way that a whiskey drinks that I think makes it apparent what is a 80 plus dollar whiskey. I get it on the Migdor's Toasted Rye. I think that drinks at such an exceptional level. Um, I get it on a, um, oh, there's another one I had recently too. Oh, the, the Wild Turkey Master's Keep, the Bottle and Bond. There's just a certain way that whiskey drinks that I can tell lots and lots of blending, lots of, you know, mastering, whether it's a master blender or a master distiller, went on with that bottle. With that bottle. But, um, yeah, so Patrick does say it could be a good comparison to see. Help decide if it's worth the hunt. Okay, well, I got a little bit more of the birthday bourbon. Let me, let me go back to the 1915 blend. I'll pour a bit, a little bit more. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just going to get so much hate. Like, Clifton recommended a home blend over birthday bourbon. This is just, um, <laughs> but, yeah, so... Oh, we got a new patron here. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Brandon. Um, ben Sawyer. I'm so sorry I missed that. I don't get notifications for Patreon. I'm supposed to. Something's broken on my um, Streamlabs. Ben Sawyer became a $5 patron, a bourbon megabyte. Ben, thank you so much. I'm so sorry I missed that. I hope you're still here. That was a few minutes ago. He is patron number 27, which means we are... Are we back over 200? Let me double check. I think we're right on that borderline, so I don't know. My um, Wi-Fi is, like, not working. Hopefully that doesn't affect my stream. <laughs> my Wi-Fi is not working on my phone, so let me let me turn that off. Can y'all can y'all still see hear me and see me? Maybe it's just the Patreon. Man, the Patreon app on on Android is awful. I'm actually who okay. Oh, oh, I was like, wait, I finally saw it. No, oh, that's Stanley. So Stanley says one bottle nineteen ten, one bottle nineteen twenty equals two bottles nineteen fifteen. Whiskey bliss. Absolutely. Again, you're paying so two bottles, you're like almost at one hundred twenty dollars. One, you don't have to search around the world for it. Two, you get two bottles worth, which is awesome. Oh, okay, so we're, Donnie says we are at 199 So we're almost at 200 So, hey, if anyone wants to become a patron, you can become a patron as, for as little as $2 a month. Um, again, no pressure. I, lo I love you guys just for tuning in here. Sticking around for me for this almost full hour. We got seven minutes left. So I do, I'm do. i going to do like you guys asked. I'm going to try the little the 1915 side by side with the birthday bourbon because cause why not? <laughs> Oh, Brandon, your text actually just came through. It just notified me. I think my Wi-Fi on my phone was acting up for a bit. All right, so Brandon is an awesome dude. Um, he says that the proof is 98, which we said. Color they describe as dusty topaz. Ooh, fancy. I don't even know what that means, but that sounds fancy. Um, aroma, a nuanced balance of white floral notes, magnolia and citrus, spiced with vanilla, buttery leather, and cocoa powder. Um, blah, blah, blah. Caramel and brittle toffee lead as the trop tropical character blooms into banana, mango, coconut flakes, and macadamia nut. Eh, I think this is mostly like, eh, I think it's marketing speak. That's my first personal opinion. I appreciate they include it, especially for someone new to bourbon. It's nice to like have someone to guide you through a tasting. However, I think a lot of those notes, you got to be really, really reaching for those. So <laughs> Steven says Patreon app on any phone is garbage. Um, Half a bite is a nibble, just saying. <laughs> Someone just do it uh, or join it $10. Yeah, at the $10 tier, you get to join our after party, and we're going to have one tonight. I will say, my husband's not home, so we can go on as long as we want. Oh, my God, that's you. <laughs> not trying to be seductive to you guys, but it'll, it'll be a fun after party. So if anyone wants to join at the $10 level, it'll definitely put us over $200 um, and get us closer to 30 patrons, which would be, oh, my God, so awesome. So Dusty Topaz is what Tope... Wait, yeah, no, Dusty Topaz, what, Topaz is a gem, is it not? I thought Topaz is like a blue gem. Hold on. Topaz. It's blue, right? Oh, no, no, it's like an amber color. What am I thinking? Of? Wait, no, there is a blue one. There's a blue Topaz. That's that's what it is. That's the difference. <laughs> there is a there is a um, gold one. I can't, let me, yeah, I can't show it to you. You, go, you can Google your own, Google your own Topaz. There is like an amber colored one, so... Uh, sure, sure. It's a topaz. <laughs> um, just re catching up in the chat here. Um, Seven Grand in Denver. So Seven Grand does have a few different locations. I'm talking about the one that's in Los Angeles. Um, they have what they call the Spirits Guide Society that um, one of the guys that, that leads the tasting there does. Um, at least ours here. 
Dusty Topaz was my drug dealer in college. <laughs> oh my god, Ed. Oh, yeah, marketing speak for sure. Yeah. Uh, Fred's still waiting on his birthday bourbon. Okay, so we're going to do the comparison. We're going to do the 1915 versus the, the birthday bourbon. We'll see. Because, I mean, they'll, they'll cost you about the same. you got to buy two bottles for the 1915, and you only got to buy one bottle for the Old Forester. Or the birthday bourbon. Good luck finding it, though. Why? Okay. Y'all are noticed every time I try the 1915, I make the same face, right? It's because I'm so shocked by how good it is. I'm like... Did I just taste the right thing? That's definitely not, but it is. That is the blend. Holy moly. Like I said, I left it mingle overnight. Who knows what it will turn into if you wait a couple weeks. So let's go to the birthday bourbon. Just a little comparison. Okay. I'm not as shooketh as I was once was. The birthday bourbon does have that I don't know how to describe it it's that what I call an le characteristic it's just like a balanced flavor there's no spikes it doesn't spike any direction it's just long lingering finish of just well balanced flavors I definitely prefer the birthday bourbon don't get me wrong however we're not talking secondary I haven't talked secondary this whole time I'm talking MSRP on this $130 yes for $130 I would pick this up over making my own 1915 blend. However, once you go into secondary territory, which, what is secondary, you guys? What is secondary on birthday bourbon? I think it's, I don't think it says up there as like a certain things, but it's definitely up there. Just curious what you guys have seen the birthday bourbon going for. Not that you guys are in any kind of like secondary groups or anything. No, no, of course not. No. Dusty Toe has an Australian <laughs> singer. Uh, maybe, maybe. We have to ask the Aussies. The Aussies should be here. I know Chris was at work or going to work. Oh, no, he was going to um, go on a walk with his mom. So, Chris, maybe we'll pop into the after party. We'll see. James Taylor does make a good point. Or four bottles of Eagle Rare. Now, again, that comes down. I think once you try one of these higher-end, like, limited edition bourbons, you'll see that it is nice to have. Now, I don't say go buy every LE around. Just get – just I don't say overpay. Holy shoot. Holy moly. Eight hundred ninety nine dollars, and then Brandon says seven hundred to eight hundred. Oh God! I mean, I guess I'm just, I guess I'm just spoiled, and I don't, I don't buy on the secondary market. I, the only thing I've ever bought secondary was like an import from like a foreign country. Um, what the hell? No, I mean, it, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but don't do that. If we would be much other off, okay. If you want something unique and special for your collection, make a blend of 1910 and 1920 called 1915 go on the bourbon group I think bourboner this guy that makes it buy your own custom label he will ship it to you for like five bucks i think label your own bottle and you will have something that 99 percent of the world doesn't have that's what i recommend you do don't pay 800 dollars on secondary for this bottle oh my god thousand dollars after tax patrick oh god that just makes me cringe oh shoot no $130, I would say, let me, let me pour, nah, I only got, I don't, I want to save a little bit. I would pay, you know, even though I'm not the biggest Old Forester fan, I would pay what I paid for the Master's Keep Bottle and Bond for this. Um, I paid about 160, I think it was like 165, or like 170 with tax or something, something around that range. I would pay up to like 170 for this, even though I'm not the biggest Old Forester fan. I think it just drinks so L-E. <laughs> it drinks so L-E. That doesn't make any sense. But once you, if you know, you know. If you've tried something that's a limited release, it just has a certain thing to And it, it could be, you know, mental games. You're like, I paid so much for this. This better be damn good. But it could also be just like, you know, they're not going to put out a shitty product and call it limited edition. I mean, some distilleries and some blenders might, but they, they don't with these. So... I'm not gonna open Aaron's sample the birthday bourbon. Brandon, I still got your sample. Brandon and um, Aaron, who's a friend of ours, um, I have both of their samples. These sets that I did today, they also bought them. <laughs> I just had them shipped to my place. So Brandon, don't tempt me. I'll drink yours. How about that? Brandon needs it because, yeah, just Brandon wants to try it. Birthday bourbon really bad. So, all right, with that, we are at eight o'clock. So that means, or eight o'clock my time, probably a lot later for you guys. So 
That means we are at the end of our stream. Like I said, if you're new here and you had fun tonight, I would love if you could subscribe and hit the bell button below. You'll be notified when I go live. I upload reviews around every Tuesday-ish, um, but I also go live here on Thursdays. Also, if you're interested in the gaming aspect of the thing, I forgot to mention, I go live on Facebook Gaming most Saturday nights. So that link is down in the description below. Hopefully I didn't make a typo there. Um, follow me on Facebook. That's a lot of fun. We, last, we've been lately playing a lot of Among Us. We've been playing some Red Dead Redemption. We've been playing some um, ah, Fall Guys. Fall Guys, that was the word I was looking for. Um, but I'm not sure what we're going to do Saturday. We might do something different this Saturday. So check me out on Facebook, facebook.com slash bourbon bites. Um, of course, like we said earlier, patreon.com slash bourbon bites if you want to come to the after party or you want to support the show. Um, let me make sure I don't have another patron. I don't want to miss anyone tonight. So, nope, we're good. So, thank you guys so much for watching. So glad to have you here. Like I said, if you didn't watch my um, compass box unboxing or review of the um, new Peep Monster Arcana, Please go check that out. It, sh it should be on my channel. If you're, if you're watching this, just go to my channel after. Just leave me a comment. Just let me know what you think. You know, just show some support. support. Just, I don't know. It just makes me feel bad because I uploaded a video while I was out. And I was like, there aren't any comments on it. Oh, I feel sad. So anyways, but you know, you guys, you know, I love you guys. And I will see those of you that are the $10 level and up on Patreon over on Discord very shortly for the Hangout. Y'all feel free to get started without me. Um, but until next time, this has been Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. Um, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Yeah, I'm probably going to film a review this weekend. So look for a new video Tuesday. I don't know what's going to be yet, but keep an eye out. All right. Cheers, you guys.